Releasing first in 2002 on the GameCube, and now again in 2023 on the Switch, Metroid Prime is a game that is rightfully celebrated by many as one of the best games the GameCube library has to offer. Now that the game has finally seen the release of its long-awaited and heavily rumored remaster, I wanted to answer the question, does this game hold up in 2023? Absolutely. And it doesn't even matter which version you choose to play. They are both incredible. This game was a joy to play through both times. This is a game that was way ahead of its time in so many ways and has so much originality to offer to any who somehow have yet to play it. There are creative puzzles and ideas at play here that I've never seen anywhere else. Like how when there's a bright explosion near you, you can see the reflection of Samus' face in her visor. I just think that's such a cool idea and something you don't ever see. It made the game feel so immersive. You're always heavily rewarded for exploring, which is something I love in video games. The developers at Retro Studios did an incredible job making something truly special. They seamlessly brought the Metroidvania formula they perfected in the 2D Metroid games over to the third dimension. Something that would have seemed a Herculean undertaking at the time, I'm sure. As a dumbass child playing this game, I did not get very far. So I was pretty eager to come back to this game as a dumbass adult and give it a real swing. Now, I'm not gonna lie, coming back to this game on the GameCube after so long had me feeling like Bambi the first time she walked on ice. I was falling off shit, I was bumping into shit, I was missing shit, you get the idea. The absolute most frustrating change they made to the remaster by far in my opinion was switching the side of the d-pad you need to hit to switch to the scan visor. Why? Why would they do this? One other minor complaint I have about the remaster is the control scheme they went with. To switch beams, you have to hold Y and make your selection on the D-pad, so you need both thumbs. You basically have to stop moving for a sec, which can be really inconvenient and clunky. It gives me like, loading the next area vibes. One of my favorite parts of this game though is the map. My god, this should be the gold standard for maps. And the 3D view that you can move around from room to room and see what you need to open what door. I'm a huge sucker for a good video game soundtrack and this game just smashes it out of the park. Between the serene and relaxing piano and harp sections that invoke a sense of wonder and discovery, and the intense boss and fight music score that raises your heart rate and makes you feel stressed, this game's score is a masterpiece from top to bottom. This is some top shelf sh**. It's not like a lot of games recently that seem to say remaster, but they look and play worse than the original. We're not gonna say any names. I said I wouldn't say it. Alright, so let's get into this game for real. Now, I know this is an old game, but since the remaster just came out and some people might be looking to play this for the first time, I wanted to give a heads up. This video is going to contain heavy spoilers, as well as showing all boss fights and the ending. So, you've been warned. So when we start up the game, we get this text about an unidentified distress signal. Quick rundown for the story for this point, Metroid Prime takes place right after Metroid and Metroid Prime Zero Mission. In Zero Mission, she destroys a space pirate stronghold, where she then starts to explore the galaxy, and then she gets the aforementioned distress signal, which leads into landing into this space station, where we get our first ever hero shot of Samus in 3D, Nintendo's most badass character to date. A basic introduction to the controls and before long we're on our way. So we realize that this ship is one of the ships that escaped you when you destroyed the stronghold in Zero Mission. All the pirates aboard are almost dead and you can scan and see that the pirates left an escape pod 6 hours before Samus arrived. This space station area acts as a way to show you everything Samus can do and before we leave the area we get a really simple boss fight which is obviously the source of the distress signal from before and it's meant to show you the importance of strafing and dodging while locked on to enemies. When we kill the Parasite Queen, the ship begins to explode. Afterward, we get a glimpse of Meta Ridley who comes in just to stunt on us real quick and then peel out. Samus killed Ridley once before but he was brought back with cybernetic implants. Resilient little cut. While we're running back to the ship, an explosion causes Samus to lose all the sweet power ups the game just showed off to you. When we make it outside, we get one final glimpse of Meta Ridley flying towards the nearby planet. So we hop in the ship and chase after him to the Talon overworld. At this point the game just drops you in and doesn't say dick. Doesn't tell you what to do, doesn't tell you where to go, it just lets you explore to your heart's content and figure out what to do. 
It was really refreshing. In an age where it seems like you have to read a book of instructions on the screen before you can start the game, I really appreciated being treated like an adult with a functional brain. Eventually you'll come to this elevator that leads you to the Chozo ruins, and it's only a few hallways away. The elevators are how you get between the different areas, or deeper within the same area in some cases. When we get to Chozo ruins, the game gives us the first hint on where we should be heading towards, but doesn't say anything else. Again perfection. Tell me the objective and then shut up and let me figure it out. We find out that the water is toxic but we need to find out why. Another great thing about this game is the fact that you can scan just about anything with your scan visor to get more information on it. Every enemy, every plant, every computer, and these like glowing green pool looking things are Chozo lore entries you can read later in your logbook that expand more on the game's story and the planet's lore. This game chooses not to bombard you with text and cutscenes and instead lets those who decide they want to know more look into it, and those who decide they just want to solve some puzzles and explore can. It's a great approach, and I wish it was used more often. Alright, so that first hint ended up being a suit upgrade, but right when we get there, it gets taken away before we're able to grab it. Some next level carrot on a stick shit. This game loves to do that. So you have to defeat a swarm of these stupid wasp things before you're able to go grab the upgrade, which is the missile launcher. When you first get the missiles, you only have five, which sucks balls. But we're gonna have a lot more by the end, so it's all good. This game throws missile upgrades at you all over the place, and now that we've got missiles, there's new doors we're able to go through that we couldn't before, which is generally the case with almost every suit upgrade. As I mentioned, you get heavily rewarded for exploring and backtracking, so it's always encouraged. When we backtrack with the missiles to the previous room, we can open a new door to access the map room. Each area in the game has a map room you can find to download the entire map, which is super useful. So we head back there again because now there's another new door to open from the main plaza and the Chozo ruins with our fancy new missile launcher. Take the door to get jumped by some roaches. You gonna wish I don't cut you up so bad. Those are bad roaches. And through there we see another suit upgrade. You think we'll be able to grab it without it disappearing? So, we need to kill this massive bug that dances the Macarena before lunging at you. It's really easy to beat if you don't have the reflexes of a brain dead sloth. Make him dance his last dance and then grab the morph ball upgrade. Now with that, we're able to get to the next area of Chozo Ruins. We came to this hallway that was blocked off by a tree, ain't a thing now. Before long, we end up in this area with the massive tree in the middle, and the main boss for this area is up top, but that's not where we're going yet. First, we still need to get the charge beam. Cross over here to this room where we need to scan and activate four symbols hidden throughout. This unlocks the giant door and grants access to the charge beam. The charge beam is useful for more than just shooting enemies because it also sucks all the ammo and health toward you. Alright, so with charge beam in hand, we do some parkour up to the top area and head through the door. A few hallways later we arrive at our next mini boss. This is the hive incinerator or something. It spins in circles shooting fire. You kill it by shooting the red rocket that pops out of the top from time to time. Once you damage it, it shoots fire at the bug hive in the ceiling which causes them to start swarming you. Little pro tip though, you can hug the middle of this thing and avoid the flames entirely while you kill the bugs and wait for the red rocket to pop out. Once you do enough damage, it'll explode and reward you with the morph ball bomb which, beyond damaging enemies, lets you boost yourself up to higher places while in ball mode. And with that, we have all we need to go ahead and give this boss the worst day of its life. So, like I said before, the boss is at the top of the room with the giant tree. To unlock the door, we need to find and scan four hidden symbols on our way up there. This is what I'd say is the first real boss, Flagra. What did you just call me? It kind of looks like Vileplume and Scyther had a baby. Anyway, what you gotta do to dummy this thing is unload your power cannon until it falls over. Over and shoot the giant mirror things that are giving this thing sunlight. After you take them all away, it shrinks up inside itself like a dick in the snow, then you transform to morph ball mode and bomb its roots. After unaliving Flagra, we get the various suit, which gives Samus her massive shoulders back and allows us to access areas of high heat. All the toxic water throughout the Chozo ruins has also now been purified and no longer harms you when you go in it. With that taken care of, we can head toward the exit which takes us to the next elevator down to Magmoor Cavern. So when we get to Magmoor Caverns, our next destination is the Fendrana Drifts elevator. So we're basically just strolling through at this time, but we'll be back. Fendrana Drifts is the ice area in this game. In order to advance, we need to jump over here and break this gate with a the missile, then roll back here and scan the screen here to remove the lock 
lock on the door. We can't kill these enemies yet, so they get to live for now. So when we head through the next door, we're in these ruins with a bunch of these ugly ass things that shoot ice at you. You can kill them by shooting them in the back, or you can just fuck off and keep moving. There's a quick jumping puzzle to get to the next door, but it's not rocket science. In the next area, we just need to look for the missile door. Through there, we need to scan this statue thing to activate the platforms, and then we head up top to find the boost ball. So now we can drop down and use it to gradually gain speed in this half pipe. When we head back to the main Fendrana Drifts area, we see Meta Ridley for the first time since the beginning of the game. We get a glimpse of him flying overhead off into the distance, which gives us a clue that we've done what we came here to do for now, and it's time to move on. So we head back through Magmore Caverns, and when we arrive at the monitor station, we head into a door at the bottom across from where we came in the first time. Once we get to the other end of that pathway, we arrive at a new elevator which takes us to a different part of the Talon overworld. So now that we're back in the Talon overworld and we have our fancy boost ball, we're able to make it to the top of this huge half pipe. Also, I don't know if they changed the timing in the remaster or if I'm just fucking stupid, but it took me so long. I was just sitting here laughing at myself because I just couldn't do it. Even though I did it no problem on the GameCube, there was like a solid five minutes of struggling that I cringe to even show you. Okay, so the reason we needed to head up there was because now we're up on the high ledge behind our ship. Up in this door here is where the space boots are, which gives us the double jump. And thank fuck for that. Once you have the double jump, this game gets so much better. Traversal is way faster, and now we can go a whole slew of new areas that we couldn't get to before. We have what we need to get going on progressing the story further. Through this door across from the ship, we head down to this courtyard with all these statues. These are Chozo statues that are supposed to house Chozo artifacts, but they aren't here. This area was created by the Chozo to contain the planet's Phazon, a poison that's corrupting everything, though some has still managed to escape. There's one artifact we can grab right away in the middle, which is the Artifact of Truth. Scan the rest of the statues to get hints on where to find the corresponding artifacts. They've been hidden across the planet. When we find all 12, we bring them back here to get access to the impact crater below and the final boss. Now we have everything we need to grab the next artifact, the Artifact of Strength. So we head back down to Magmore and head over to the room called Monitor Station on the map. Then we use these shiny space boots to parkour up to the top of the building. Then we use the boost ball in this random contraption here to raise the bridge off to the side and then we can finally clear the gap. Once we're over, we just head up to this door and inside there, the artifact of strength is waiting for us. From there, we make our way back to the Fendrana Drifts elevator. When you return to the Winter Wonderland, double jump this gap to the floating platform to make it to the next doorway in the area. This gap requires you to do two max distance jumps with your long jump, so you really need to wait a long time before you do the second jump. The first time I came here, I thought I was missing something. Turns out, it was just a few brain cells. Once we make the jump, we end up in the Chozo Ice Temple. Make your way up to the top and scan the statue faces until you find one that says it's cracked. Blast it to smithereens and hop up there in morph ball mode and power it up to lift the gate off to the side and advance further. Now what you gotta do here is destroy these pillars from the bottom with morph ball bombs so that we can get through. Once we're on the other side, you see another suit upgrade. How much you wanna bet this shit's gonna go away before I can grab it? Yep, there she goes. So in order to get the upgrade, you need to kill all these babies to piss off the mother enough to show herself. She is massive, but she also isn't hard at all. Just walk right up to her and shoot her right in the stomach a whole bunch. It's the only place that does damage. Once you've slain the vile beast, you can claim your wave beam. This lets you open the purple doors and also lets you kill those weird ball enemies we couldn't damage before. Thank god. Alright, so now we head back to these ruins we were in before and walk around till you see a massive icicle hanging down. Blast it with a missile to create a platform to jump up and progress across the rooftops and over to the next door where we take our wave beam's virginity with its first door. <sighs> Through there we end up in this lake room where we need to use the boost ball to open up the vents and activate the morph ball power switch which then raises the water levels and all the platforms for a brief period of time. Parkour your way to the top where we can see a wave door, a save room, and a door with no power, which is a problem. But, like Vanilla Ice always says, if you got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. So head through the wave door where we get immediately assaulted in the physical manner. Deal with that fool and then head through to the next room where we have a nice little tussle with some space pirates who we need to kill in order to unlock the doors. Through the next door is some sort of lab where we fight off these enemies and keep making our way up. 
eventually we come to this giant cylindrical room where we need to kill some more space pirates and then work on bringing power back to the holographic display in the middle. Doing so will move the platforms in the room around so you can climb higher and we can access the next suit upgrade, the super missile. The super missile is really useful for boss fights and it also lets you destroy things that we couldn't destroy before with our regular missiles. It does use your regular missile ammo though and uses 5 at a time so use at your own risk. Through there is an elevator that brings us to the control tower. In this area we see those flying pirates for the first time and oh my fuck I hate these things. They're always buzzing around your head like fucking gnats and when you kill them they kamikaze you and explode at your feet. Anyway, kill all of them and unlock the door to another elevator which brings us to a research lab where we run into our first metroid in 3D. Make your way down to the bottom floor, toe tagging every space pirate on your way. There's an energy tank hidden in plain view in this cryotube thing here. Blast it with a missile and get a health increase of 100 points. Alright and with that we keep moving to this tall ass research type facility where we bust in, killing folk and not bothering to ask no questions. They earned it. If you read all the scannable logs and Chozo lore throughout Fendrana Drifts, you find out the space pirates have been doing experiments using Phazon, which the Chozo call the Great Poison. We also find that the space pirates brought Metroids with them who survived the destruction of Zebes. Okay, so on the way down to the bottom of this area, scan computers to deactivate the shield around the next suit upgrade. Once you've got them all, you can grab the thermal visor. I actually hate this thing. Like, wow, does it ever give my old man brain a headache. It was actually way worse on my eyes in the remaster than it was in the GameCube version. I could feel my glasses prescription getting worse the longer I played. So the thermal visor lets you see electric conduits that can be powered using your wave beam. We're going to be doing this a lot from now on. Remember that problem that we were going to solve before? On our way back there though, everyone and their mom came out to get you for stealing that thermal visor. So once we get there, we have both things we need that we were missing before. First we use a super missile to blast this weird thing which is hiding the conduit and then we can use the thermal visor to see it. Once we go through the door, we're just a few short tunnels and walkways away from the next boss, Thardis. Thardis is basically a sentient Phazon that was given life by the space pirate experiments. He's not overly difficult, but he is overly annoying. So we need to use the thermal visor in order to lock onto the hidden weak spot beneath the rocky exterior. And once you expose the weak spot, you get blinded in the thermal vision. So you gotta go back to regular vision and do damage to the spot that you exposed. He has quite a few attacks like hitting the ground to send out an ice beam that freezes you and launching giant rocks at you. But when you destroy a weak spot, he turns into a ball and chases after you for a bit. But this section was dumb as fuck because you can't control the camera in ball mode, so you can't fucking see where he is. Eventually, he calls in a snowstorm that you can't see shit, which makes the fight even worse. Again, not difficult, just not fun. Easily the weakest point in the game in my personal opinion. Anyway, rant over. After you beat Fartis, you get the spider ball, which lets you cling to these bright orange yellow paths and will now allow us to access lots of new areas, as per usual. First we head through the door to an elevator to a new area of Magmore Caverns, just like last time we were here, we're only here for the view. We're passing right on through and heading back to the Talon Overworld and then Chozo Ruins. Now that the water is purified, we can explore more thoroughly without worry. So we're on our way to the Chozo Elder Ruins. To get there, we come down here to the spider ball track we couldn't use last time. So now we're in a whole new area but facing these same dancing jive turkeys. So we roll through here and into this wave door where we have a fun boost ball puzzle where you need to use your super missiles to destroy this thing which is blocking a rune. Scan it to unlock the spider ball path and then head into the half pipe. You gotta get up really really high to get to the spider ball path so if you haven't mastered this by now have fun. Also, due to a general lack of brain activity, I accidentally let go of the trigger after I was already up there and had to get up there again. Anyway, bomb that one which unlocks the next one, do it again which unlocks an elevator, then take the elevator to a missile expansion. This game has a lot of fun optional puzzles that are really creative and make full use of the game's unique mechanics. I'm only going to show off a few in this video, but there are so many. I love this game. Creative puzzles and games give me a little nerd boner. This is the Chozo Elder Ruins now. When we get here, we see these Chozo ghosts for the first time. These things are really annoying and just teleport all over the place and shoot you. Once they're all dead, hop into Daddy Chozo's hands in ball mode where we get tossed off this ramp and onto the spider ball track. Give power to this thing and head up onto the area behind the statue where those three colored shields are. We only have access to the purple door at this time. Shoot it, power it up, and pay Daddy Chozo another visit. This time we head upwards and behind the blue shield 
Scan this computer thing to deactivate it for easy access later. Through the door here, we have a pool we need to empty, so hop into the water and free up the drain, creating another half pipe. Use the boost ball to get to the second level, and if you get swallowed up by one of these fat toe things, just use a morph bomb to kill it. Behind this missile door, we get my favorite upgrade in the entire game, the ice beam. This thing is the fucking best. Most enemies can be frozen with one shot and then killed with one missile. That includes those annoying ass flying cats that normally take like three missiles each. If you want to go open the second colored shield in the daddy chozo room from before, you'll find a health upgrade. We're going to make our way to Flagra's corpse and we can't get there the regular way we went with the first time we faced her. So we're going to have to go back the way we left after beating her. If you head back to this room with the spider ball track, the path up is blocked. So you need to find and scan four symbols. Fight off some more Chozo ghosts, and then the next Chozo artifact, the Artifact of Wild, will show up like a star atop Flagra's rotting corpse, like some sort of metal as fuck Christmas tree. After making your trophy, head to the Magmore Caverns elevator and then to the Fendron Drifts and back to this area with the rising water levels here. Thankfully with the double jump and the spider ball in hand, we don't need to deal with that anymore. What we do need to deal with though are these motherfucking jetpack twats that always seem to be everywhere now. Okay, so one of the only things I can't stand about this game is how often the enemies respawn. If you move like two or three rooms over and go back, they're alive again. One of the very few questionable game decisions in a near flawless game. Anyway, heading back to the tall research area where the metroids were, jump down to the bottom and use the ice beam to open the door we couldn't open before. That leads to the frozen pipe. We're heading down to the bottom door where we need to shoot down some icicles to access the next doors. More jetpack dudes. Kill them and then jump down into the water below. Go through some hallways where we end up in another room where we need to shoot down some icicles to advance. Progress through some more water to these freaky tentacles until we arrive at the next suit upgrade, the gravity suit. This one's pretty cool looking. It makes her suit change to a nice purple color and it also gives us the ability to move about freely in the water as if we were on dry land. Physics be damned. With that in hand, we're headed back to the new area of Talon Overworld we unlocked just before we headed to the Fendrana Drifts, the frigate crash site. So we head through the door and down into the depths, making our way towards the sunken frigate Orpheon ship, which is the ship that exploded at the beginning of the game where we fought the Parasite Queen. The doors leading inside require a power conduit. We're shocked. Head through some more doors where we're finally in the sunken frigate, my favorite area in the game for the music alone. The music in this area is incredible and one of my new favorite video game songs. We need to use our thermal visor to find and activate four conduits to open the door forward. Once through, we do it again and then we make our way up the elevator shaft, finding and scanning conduits on the way up. So I'm just going to fast forward through this area because there's a lot of this finding and scanning conduits to advance so I don't feel like repeating myself. Eventually we end up out of the ship and into a new section of the Great Tree Hall area from the Talon Overworld. When we advance through the door, we'll find an elevator to the last new area in the game, Phazon Mines. So first up, scan the computers to open the shield blocking the way forward. Head through some long hallways with a few of those disappearing enemies. Once we get near the top of the really long room, we get greeted by a new type of enemy. These are scattered throughout Phazon Mines, and there is one to match each color of beam we have. How considerate of them that they color coordinate their weaknesses for us like that. Much appreciated. When we finally fight our way to the top, we enter a research room with a giant pirate in a cryotube thing. Remember this one, cause we'll be back to fight it later. Right now though, we're headed to the top of the room, so keep scanning computers to activate platforms until you're at the top. At the top, we have to move this giant missile launcher using the boost ball to blast the rocks out of the way to the next area. There's also a missile upgrade hidden behind one of these walls. The next room has a puzzle where you need to rotate the cylinder in the middle, section by section, lining up the spider ball paths until you can get up to the top. And there's conveniently a little display beside the morph ball thing showing you what it currently looks like. I think I just got a chub. So we can't get to the top floor at the moment, so we make it to the second floor where we come to an elevator down deeper into the mines. When you get off the elevator, shoot this explosive box here if you want to laugh at this dumb loser who was going to ambush us. Get fucked. Also that lets you grab a missile expansion too, getting two birds stoned at once. When you head to the end of the hallway, we end up in our next mini boss fight with an elite pirate. One change in this game was the damage needed to kill the elite pirates. In the GameCube version, you can kill them with two super missiles, but the Switch remaster takes three super missiles. So as I mentioned before, if you're reading the lore scattered throughout the game, you'll know Phazon is being used in the Space Pirate experiments, where they essentially created a very large and powerful elite pirate. 
After we kill him, we make our way up to the top of the room, killing the elite pirates who ambush us and end up in this small halfpipe room. This room spits out poison as soon as you drop down, and we can't do anything about that right now, so we just gotta move on. We fight a shitload of elite pirates in the next room, then end up in one of the more stressful parts of the game. So, Phase on Mines has the longest stretch in the game without a save point. Everything you've seen so far, there hasn't been a single save point yet. So before we can finally save our progress, we have to do another little mini boss fight. So we fight this boss that can't be locked onto, which is an absolute nightmare in the GameCube version, but a little easier in the Switch version thanks to the dual stick controls. After we beat him, we still need to navigate this electric maze to get to the next suit upgrade before the doors will unlock. The next suit upgrade is the power bomb, which is usable in morph ball mode and lets you destroy things that even your super missile can't destroy. After we save and move forward to the next room, we can see a yellow shield with metroids behind it. So we can scan this computer to unleash them on the space pirates and laugh. We'll need to kill the metroids after still though. So we can't actually progress any farther here yet, so we need to head back to the cylindrical room with the rotating spider ball puzzle and then clear the debris out of the way with our new power bomb to progress to the last floor and finish the puzzle. Then use another power bomb up top to clear the rubble in front of the door and then get the next suit upgrade grapple beam. So, as is well documented in this retrospective series of mine, I'm a f***ing idiot. So much so, I forgot to record the remaster footage of the next part, so enjoy the full size version of the GameCube game for a little while while I stare at myself in disapproval. So with grapple beam in hand, we're headed back to the Talon overworld to the room near the Phase and Mines elevator with the weird screw looking thing. Up top, there's a rock in the way we can clear with a power bomb, a little boost ball puzzle, and then we're into this room that has another suit upgrade waiting for us, the x-ray visor. Now we can use it to see which walls in here we can blast to escape. There's also a Chozo artifact we can grab here by bombing this thing in the pond, which reveals this thing for a morph ball, which then reveals the next artifact, the artifact of Chozo. Pretty meta name. After grabbing that, we head up to the top where we fight off more Chozo ghosts, which are slightly less annoying now that you can always track them with the thermal visor. Defeating them opens the path for us to leave this area. So now I'm going to show you how to grab a few optional upgrades. First of those is the Wave Buster, a more powerful wave beam that you use the same way you use a super missile with a power beam. To get it, we backtrack to the Chozo Ruins to the Ruined Shrine, where we can access a new part of the area thanks to the Boost Ball and the Spider Ball. Through here we have a massive tower we need to make our way to the top of. On the way up, use your missiles to destroy each pillar to lower the platforms enough for you to keep jumping toward the top. Each pillar takes three missiles. Once we finally make it to the top, we can grab the wave buster. Afterwards, jump all the way to the bottom and into the water to find the next Chozo artifact, the Life Giver artifact. It's up in this wave beam door. After grabbing that, we're headed back to the Magmor Caverns for the next optional upgrade and Chozo artifact. So we head to the shore tunnel and towards this bridge here where we can scan and see that there are two fractures. Use a power bomb to destroy the glass and drop down to the platform below where the ice spreader is waiting for us. This is just like the wave buster, an upgrade for the ice beam which is basically an ice missile that uses your missile ammo. After grabbing that, we're headed over to Lava Lake for the artifact. So when we get to this room with the pillar in the middle, we can use the x-ray visor to see that there's an artifact hidden here. So we use a super missile to blast it away. Thank god that wasn't a load bearing pillar. And we hop up to the top to grab the artifact of nature. After that, we're headed for our last non-optional suit upgrade. It's also in Magmore Caverns in the geothermal core. Once there, we use our handy dandy grapple hook to start making our way up to a new area we couldn't access before. Once on each new platform, use the boost ball to raise each part of the platform higher so you can continue to advance up top. Eventually, when we've raised all the platforms, a fucking massive panoramic spider ball puzzle gets revealed to us as the entire ceiling gets raised. This was one of the few times in the game where I was like, holy shit, for real, it just keeps going. And if you fall, you need to go all the way back up to the fucking top to try again. This part had my butthole clenched so hard, especially this part where you need to drop like 20 feet and re-grab the spider ball track. What a rush! When we finally make it, we use a power bomb to remove the debris and grab the plasma beam, which lets us open the red doors. We now have all the suit upgrades except for one, the flamethrower. Next up, we're headed to a new elevator which takes us to the next part of the phase on mines that we haven't been to yet. When we get there, we see that the hallway is covered in phase on, so we need to grapple over the gap. 
We're on our way over to the last of the few bosses in the game. On our way, we head through a few research facilities, fighting space pirates, and the color-coordinated Power Rangers on the way. We also run into another elite pirate, but he was just as easy as the first time. Eventually, we end up back in a Metroid research area where we deactivated the shield from the first time we were in the Phazon mines. Now that we have the X-ray visor, we can advance further. So you hop up onto the mushrooms here and you turn on the visor to see some hidden platforms and we take those up to the spider ball path and find a hidden elevator to level 3 of the Phazon mines, the deepest level. Here we need to platform on a bunch of mushrooms and use this sentient grapple hook to advance. Before long we end up at this morph ball tunnel with hella Phazon so we need to be a bit careful. Through there we get high on some more shrooms and then we use the grapple beam on this flying thing again to cross. Once through, we dummy some fools and head on the spider ball track to the top of the room and then grapple across to the other side, scan the computer to remove the shield, and keep moving. After that, we've arrived at one of the few save stations in this area which they gracefully place just outside the boss door. You can cheese the scan for the boss before you move close enough for the cutscene to start so you don't need to deal with it while you're fighting with him. According to the game's lore, he's just a fat bloated elite pirate that was an insatiable glutton for Phazon which made him swole AF. To do damage, we need to destroy all the large Phazon deposits on his body, then he'll disappear for a bit, only to reappear randomly like some John C and then you can only see him by using the x-ray visor, where we can finally do some real damage for a brief period of time. When he dies, he falls on top of Samus, and the Phazon from his body morphs with Samus' suit to give us the most badass suit in the game, the Phazon suit. Seriously, the red and black just looks so good. The suit lets us touch Phazon without being harmed. So we're quickly gonna go back the way we came before we move forward, because back in that morph ball tunnel, there was a Phazon path we couldn't take yet. Now if we head down there, we'll find the next Chozo artifact, the artifact of Newborn. After getting that, while we're here, we're heading back to the top floor of the Phazon mines, to the mine security station. There's a plasma door there we couldn't open before, so we destroy the gate with a power bomb and scan the computer which removes the shield from the door, where we head through and grab the flamethrower suit upgrade which I'm sure is self-explanatory. At this point in the game, we're playing Artifact Roundup. We've got 7 in total, so there's 5 more to get before we can head towards the final showdown. Just for the sake of time, I'm gonna skip showing me run all over the fucking place and just show you where they are since we've all been through most areas of the game together in this video anyway. The Artifact of Sun can be found here in the frozen ruins and the Fendron Drifts at the frozen statue. Blast it with some plasma to melt the ice and reveal a morph ball hole. The artifact of Elder is in the control tower also in Fendrana. Jump up here and melt the ice over the window, then use a super missile on the tower to knock it over. Then roll down into the fallen tower and grab it. The last artifact on Fendrana is the artifact of Spirit, which is in Fendrana's edge. Climb up here until you get to use the x-ray visor to see a hidden door. The warrior artifact can be found in the Phazon mines in the elite research room. Head to the bottom to see this huge ugly fuck in the cryo tube that we saw before. Use a power bomb to free him, then kill his ass right after. Killing him rewards you with the warrior artifact. The final artifact, Artifact of World, is in the Chozo ruins in the Hall of the Elders. Head to that area with the colored blast shields and use the plasma beam and Daddy Chozo will move, revealing a door to the artifact. And with that, we finally have all the artifacts and can move on to the last section of the game. So when we head back to the Talon overworld and over to the statues at the impact crater where we get the cutscene showing all the artifacts getting placed back into statues. Immediately after, Meta Ridley swoops down on us for revenge and to deny us entry. The boss fight has two phases, but thankfully not two health bars. The first part consists of him flying around shooting laser beams and missiles at you, where you need to shoot his chest with your own beams and missiles. When you do a bit of damage, he flies away for a bit, and comes back to shoot lasers and drops bombs in your vicinity. Every once in a while he'll slam down on the ground, but this first part is really easy. Before too long, when we do enough damage to him, his wings burn off, leaving him a flightless bird. At this point, he's pissed and gets more aggressive. Doing damage is a bit more annoying now because for some reason, you can only damage him when his mouth is open, so you need to time your attacks accordingly. The most annoying move he does in this battle is this thing where he charges you, and it still hits you even when you feel like he dodged it. Anyways, once we defeat him, we get this Hesh's f cutscene where all the Chozo Elder ghosts appear like, Yeah, we see what you did, cuz. Respect. 
and then finish a job for us by zapping his bitch ass with some Giga Chad voodoo ghost magic. Afterwards, they release the shield and lower the entrance to the impact crater where the final boss is waiting for us. So in this last section, there's a bit of a trek to get to the last boss door and you're getting harassed by these fucks the entire way there. I absolutely hate it when you're trying to skip past all the metroids and one of them intercepts you and starts sucking you off and you gotta stop what you're doing, go into ball mode and get it off you. Like, oh my god, I'm just trying to finish this game, you irrelevant f Once we're through the metroid section, we need to get through the spider ball puzzle. It's not hard though, which made it feel kind of pointless at this point in the game, but that's okay. So once we get to the boss door, you get a quick glimpse of the boss before it jumps down. It was actually spookier looking in the GameCube version though. Once it drops down, it looks like a snow crab and then it scuttles away and we have to chase it. This thing is Metroid Prime. Ah, ah, he it, he it. You could have given me a hundred guesses on what this boss looked like and I promise you, I would not have gotten it right. This is a heavily mutated and powerful Metroid and no doubt the biggest reason the Chozo built this prison for it. So this boss also has two phases and each phase gets its own health bar. In the first phase, you need to match your beam to whatever the boss's highlights are. He has a few attacks here but they're not hard to avoid. Just hide behind these rocks whenever he's doing a Kamehameha and you'll be fine. Eventually he runs deeper down and we follow him. This time when you do enough damage you'll sprint across the map and you need to go into morph ball mode and hide in the trench so he doesn't kill you. Then rinse and repeat until he runs away again. On the last level of the first phase, the room is a lot smaller and there's only two trenches to go in to avoid him, but it's all the same. This phase of the boss really isn't that hard. Once we finally crack the snow crab's outer shell, Metroid Prime's true form starts flying around looking like some f***ed up squid. This was honestly a little disappointing as a final boss cause it was just so easy. So you'll quickly figure out that all your weapons don't do sh**. So what you need to do is wait till Metroid Prime does an attack that spawns a pool of Phazon. Stand in the pool to get a Phazon beam and unload on that fool until the pool dries up to do some serious damage. When he disappears, you just need to cycle through your visors until you find the right one you need to see him. It's usually a different one every time. He'll also start calling out Metroids to f with you, but you can power bomb them to get rid of them pretty quick. Other than that, the fight stays the same until the end. Keep jumping over the attack rings he sends at you and wait for the phase on pools. We finally defeat Metroid Prime. We see it transform again into a fucking blowfish and then it sucks the phase on out of our suit and explodes as we sprint away. The crater begins to collapse and Samus calls her ships to her as she's running out and jumps to it like a boss where she watches the crater collapse and then the end credits roll. Afterward, we see a clip of Samus flying away in her spaceship. If anyone is curious to know what happens next in the story, Metroid Prime Hunters on the Nintendo DS is the next game in the sequence, followed by Metroid Prime 2 on the GameCube. So, after playing through both of these incredible games, the Switch version is the absolute gold standard for a remaster. There is so much care to meticulously make every enemy, place, and item look and feel as good as possible. I had an absolute blast playing this game, and it is certainly one that I'll be revisiting down the road. If I had to give it a rating, I'd give it about a 9 out of 10. There's a few things keeping it back from being a perfect 10 out of 10 for me, but it's still an incredible game. This game truly was a technical marvel for its time, doing lots of things that other games just were not doing, and still don't do to this day. No matter which version of this game you're able to get your hands on, Metroid Prime is an absolute masterpiece and I 100% recommend that you play it. So, did I miss anything that you know about? Maybe you're a younger gamer who's playing this for the first time? I'd love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments below. If you made it all the way to the end of this long ass video, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw today and I'll see you guys next time.